If you think that carbohydrates are bad for you, you may get into a fight with your penis because your penis likes carbohydrates. This is a video about carbohydrates and why you and your penis need them. If you believe that low carb is your thing, this may not be the kind of video you would want to watch because it may go against all you believe in. My name is Stefan Buntrock. I'm a board certified urologist and sexologist. Nutrition is important for any medical specialty. For this reason, I am subspecializing in nutritional medicine. More videos on this amazing topic and its impact on your genital and sexual health are to come. So subscribe, like the video and become a member of this channel. In my last videos, some of you commented how bad carbohydrates were because they are all sugar. That's a total misunderstanding of carbohydrates. As always, things are not that simple. If you want a takeaway message up front, it's this. Everything in moderation. Avoid the extremes. I didn't come up with it. Antique philosophers and poets did, as Epicurus, Hesiod, Plautus, but also Irish poet hmm? Oscar Wilde has hmm. a famous quote in this spirit. It's the same with carbohydrates. You need them to move and for your brain to work. They provide you with essential nutrients that no other macronutrient can. And guess what? Carbohydrates are biomolecules that can be broken down to all kinds of sugars. Now it becomes complex because sugar is important for your body to function well. So sugar in itself is not a bad thing, but sugar is much more than that white stuff you sprinkle over your cornflakes. There is more than one kind. There are simple sugars by the name of monosaccharides, more complex ones which are called disaccharides and very complex ones. We call them polysaccharides. You may have heard the name starch. That's a complex form of sugar. Glucose is a simple sugar. It is vital for life. Glucose is fast energy and is stored as glycogen in the liver and muscles. The body has to maintain a certain level of glucose at any given time for proper function. Okay, some of you don't trust me. Let me explain by a real life example. Diabetes is a very common disease. I am sure all of you know somebody with diabetes. Diabetics should carry dextrose for sudden blood sugar drops. This is what happens when blood sugar is low. Fast heartbeat, sweating, shaking, loss of body control, coma, and even death. So you need sugar. But here's the catch. You don't need added sugars. They only provide calories, no vitamins, minerals, or fiber, and may make you fat. What you want to eat are complex carbohydrates. They are digested more slowly and there is a slower release of glucose into your bloodstream. Complex carbohydrates contain fiber, vitamins, essential nutrients you can't get from any other food. This is where whole grain products, vegetables and legumes come into play. If you want to cut out carbs, that's totally fine. As long as you cut out simple carbs as added sugar, candy, soft drinks, white bread, highly processed food. But cutting out any kind of carbohydrates in favor of proteins will not benefit your health. Data from the NHANES study in the US have shown a clearly increased risk for cancer, heart disease and death among those with the lowest intake of carbohydrates. And that was a large cohort of almost 25,000 participants with a median follow-up of 6.4 years. Studies from other parts of the world reported similar findings. But there were also studies which didn't find increased death rates. Like a large cohort study from the US that included 37,000 adults. The Japanese Nippon study even showed a reduced risk of death and heart disease. However, listen up, this is important. The authors of the American study also found a difference between healthy and unhealthy low-carb diets. So if you eat low-carb and the carbs you eat are refined, simple ones like white bread, then your risks are higher. If you instead eat whole grains and legumes, the risk will not be increased. 
So the quality of your carbs is important. I hope you begin to realize that things are not as simple as you would like them to be. What about the penis? Anything that's bad for your heart is bad for your penis. The same risk factors apply. So a bad diet that will make your heart sick will also make your penis sick. In addition to that, research has shown a big drop in testosterone levels with a low-carb, high-protein diet. This finding occurred in very high-protein diets with more than 3.4 grams per kilogram per day. Low testosterone often interferes with people's sex lives, as it decreases libido. Low libido has an impact on erectile quality. Moreover, a very recent study has shown erectile dysfunction with very pronounced carbohydrate restriction. The reason is most probably a reduced release of nitric oxide and less relaxation of the smooth muscle inside the penis. However, this study was an animal study. In humans, it may be different. But to be on the safe side, I recommend that you abstain from extreme dietary regimens and work on the quality of your diet instead. Here's a video on how to achieve a balanced diet. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.